In today's devotional, uh, we've been talking about the parables of Jesus. Today, uh, it's more of an illustration that Jesus gives than it is a, a parable. And he wraps up the most famous sermon in the history of man with the illustration that we're going to talk about today. In your Bible, Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7 are the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, when you read through that, that's all one sermon. And so I would encourage you at some point, uh, read five, chapters 5, 6, and 7, and, and don't think about the chapters and the verses. Just read it all as one sermon. But as Jesus concludes this sermon, he tells a, a story. He says, those who hear these words of mine and put them into practice, they're like a wise man who's built his house on the rock. And then he says, a storm comes and the house stands. And then he says, but those who hear these words of mine and do not put them into practice, they're like a foolish man that built his house on the sand and the storm comes and the house collapses. By the way, the story of the three little pigs and the big bad wolf and the houses made of straw and of sticks and then of brick come from this story that Jesus tells. And in this story, here's the question I want to ask. He gives this illustration, and in the illustration, who has the words of Jesus? The one who built his house on the rock or the one that built their house on the sand? Which group has the words of Jesus? Well, here's the answer. Both groups do. The difference between building your house on the rock and building your house on the sand is application. Both groups have the words, both groups have the information, but the person that built their house on the rock practices application. And application is, is everything. I'm going to say that again. Application is, is, is everything. Um, I'll just tell you this. So I, I've been pastoring now for over 20 years, and yeah, I'm getting older. The hair is getting grayer a little more every year, right? Especially in times of stress, it seems like it gets grayer over overnight, which might be might be true. But in 20 plus years of ministry, uh, people will talk to me, especially people that have been in church a long time, and they'll say, you know, give us deep teaching and things like that. And anytime somebody says that to me, I want something deep. I'll say, what do you mean by deep? And nine times out of 10, they don't know. And the one time out of 10, uh, what they mean is, give me more information. And I'm all for that. Just so you know, I'm an information person. I love to read books. I love to discuss uh, varying ideas. I love information. But usually when somebody says, give me something deep, they don't know what they mean. And then the one out of, out of 10, right? The people that do have an idea what they mean, what they mean is tell me something I, I, I didn't know. Give me the Greek word. G give me those kinds of, uh, of things. And, and I just want to make a point. Mature believers are not just equipped with information. Mature believers are those who take the information they have and they practice application. They apply it. If you want the house of your life to be built on the rock of Jesus, then do what he says. And here's what I've learned in, in my life. The power is found in the main and the plain when it comes to the teachings of Jesus. The main and the plain. For example, in this Sermon on the Mount, before he says, if you do what I say, you know you've built your house on the rock. In the Sermon on the Mount, he talks about loving your enemies. Have you ever tried to do that? Bless those who persecute you. Have you ever tried to do that? In this sermon, he talks about that there's the sin of, a, of adultery, and, and, and we know what that is, right? But then he says, but if you lust after someone in your heart, you've committed adultery with them in the, in the eyes of, of God. It's not just how are you doing out here, but how are you doing in here, in, 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 your, in your heart? Maturity is application. If I can be so bold, maturity is transformation.
And here's how transformation works. It's information plus application equals transformation. When you and I take the things that we know from God's word, when the pressures of life hit us, when pain hits us, and when we make those applications, that's how we grow. And that's how Jesus begins to do a rock solid work in our, in our souls. So here's the question for today. It's not, hey, would you like more information? Uh, because a lot of Christianity in that realm is simply edutainment. Be funny, be interesting, and tell me something I didn't know, because that's deep. Or talk to me in such a way I don't have a clue what you said, because that's deep. And I'll just tell you, as a pastor, um, I'm happy, right, to throw you a bone that you got to chew on for a long time you hadn't thought about before. You know, it's deep. It's, it's, it's new and information. But I would rather give you something regularly that's helpful, that you can apply, listen, and that changes your life. Information plus what? Application equals transformation. And this is what Jesus wants for you and for me. I'm going to read one verse, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, and then I'm going to pray for us. Therefore, Jesus says, everyone who hears these words, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Let me pray for you. Father, give us wisdom of these things. To believe is to trust, and to trust is to obey. May application and obedience be the barometer of maturity in our life. Father, if we could just live up to what we've already obtained when it comes to our knowledge of you, man, life would be different. So, Father, give us the wisdom of the power of application. And may we seek obedience more than we seek education and entertainment. Teach us, we pray, and may we trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen.